So in this video, we're talking about handling form submissions using Basin. Now, Basin is a form backend that allows you to collect your form submissions, such as a contact form submissions, in a nice dashboard. So it exposes a backend endpoint for you that you can submit your forms to. It allows you to send emails, notifications. You can also integrate it with other third-party services. So once you receive a form submission, it can just do other stuff. We're going to walk through that in a second, but we're basically implementing this in an Next.js app where we're handling the form submission using uh, server actions, React Hook forms, and Zot for validation. And from the server action, we're calling our basin endpoint. So if you haven't already, you can go ahead and create an account on the basin website. It's usebasin.com. There's a link in the description. And once you create an account, there's different tiers or different pricing plans. There is a free plan, which allows you to, to have one form and one project. And this is what I'm using here. And once you create an account, it is going to create this first form by default for you. If you click on it, there's different settings you can play around with. But basically what we need from this form is just this endpoint that you can see here. Um, as you can see, I've already tested it out, but you can go to settings. There are different forms or different things you can do here. General, it, you can just name it differently. You can enable Ajax. So this is going to enable you to send the form data through JavaScript and respond in JSON data. You have to set some accept headers to application JSON as well. If you don't set this, it's going to uh, expect a form data and it responds with some HTML. So you can basically use this basin form in a simple static HTML website as well. But we're going to use this Ajax functionality. You can send redirects here. So if you're using with the HTML, you can just redirect after this, the form submission, redirect it to a custom URL and whatnot. There is, as I mentioned, uh, basic and advanced spam filters. You can set Cloudflare turnstile. You can use reCAPTCHA from Google, different versions. Uh, so you can definitely read through this. Uh, we're going to just use the basic spam filter in this tutorial, but you, you know that this already exists. And there's this tab that you can just test your form submissions to see if it is working. On the project level, there's also some settings for the domains that you want to allow form submissions from. So uh, once you have your endpoint, we're going to use the server action. So it's hided behind our server action inside of our own server, but you can also go ahead and set some allowed domains here. So your form endpoint only accepts incoming form submissions from a specific domain that you specify here. You can block email domains and whatnot. And there are some templates too, so you can use Basin to build a form as well. This is not what we're using in this example. We're just using it as a form backend. So let's go back to our form here. Now on the left hand side, you can see I've already started a Next.js app. This is built on top of our Next Chat CN template. Uh, I'm going to include a link in the description and also a video on the channel where I walk you through how to set up Next.js with Chat CN. And basically, our homepage is just our homepage. We have a contact page, which we're going to dive into in a second. And that's pretty much it. So let's just get started on uh, our contact page. Let me show you around. From a high level, we have this form with two inputs, name and email, and then a text area for the message. And we are handling our form here with React Hook Forms. Now I'll walk you through from a high level what we're doing here, but there's a video on the channel where we talk about server actions, React Hook Forms, form validations, error handling, and pending state. I'm going to include those videos. So if you're not comfortable with what I'm showing here, definitely watch those videos where I dive deeper into the details of how to implement a form submission using server actions and React Hook Forms specifically. But from a high level, we are using the use form hook from React Hook Forms and we are defining a schema for our contact form submission. This is under lib, under schema. As you can see, I have this contact form schema. There's a name, email, and a message. So back to the contact page over here, we're bringing that schema to define the inputs for our Zod validation. We're using a Zod resolver together with our React hook form. And then we're exposing this process form submit handler from where we are calling our server action. Just before we dive into the server action, we are passing this handle submit to our on submit event handler of our form. And then 
passing this process form, which in turn is going to call this process form once React Hook 4 makes sure that the data actually passes the Zot validation. Again, if this is too much, watch the videos that I mentioned to understand how the React Hook form and Zot validation work together. Now, once our data passes our validation, we land inside of this process form. We receive the data, which is the data submitted by the user, name, email, and message. We're going to then use that data to call our contact form action. Now, inside of our lib, again, I have this actions file. And inside of this actions file, I've marked it with the use server. This is a convention to use server actions in Next.js if you want to use them or put all of your server actions in one file. You just mark it with a use server. This in turn is going to turn all of the functions in this file into server actions. Now I have this contact form action. It receives the data of type inputs. This is inferring the type from the same schema that we had. And this is thanks to Zot. You can define a schema and then infer types from it. So you don't have to have types and schemas together. Now we're going to parse our, da parse our data even though we have made sure that this data is valid from our front end. We always make sure to also validate the data in the back end as well. If this is not successful, we are returning an error message. This is from a server action, so you can return any object. I'm returning a message over here to say something has gone wrong. We're going to go back to see what happens inside of the page, inside of our form submission in a second, in return of this server action. But before we get there, we have defined our endpoint. This is the same endpoint that we have gotten from our basin account. I've set it inside of a local environment variable for good measures. And once we get that, we're just going to send a fetch request to this endpoint, a post request. I'm setting some content type headers for application JSON, and I'm stringifying the data that I received from my form submission. Now, if the response is not okay, or something went wrong, I'm throwing the error, which in turn is going to get caught in this catch statement from where I'm just returning another object with an error property that I'm going to read on the client side to show a toast of notification of this error happening. And if everything goes well, I'm redirecting the user back to the thank you page, which is just a static page that says thank you. So this is our server action. Now going back to our form, once we call the server action, we're going to get the result back. If there is an error property on the result from the objects we are returning from the server action, we're showing a toast notification with that specific error message. And if not, we're just redirecting the user back to the thank you page so we won't be here. So this is just showing a toast notification in case of an error. If not, we're good to go. We are on the thank you page already. So let's test this out. I'm going to uh, send a test email here. Test email. Let's click contact. Now, I was redirected back to the thank you page, but before I go there, I want to talk about this button too. So we are uh, reading this is submitting from the use form state. This is going to give us a register. This is to register our inputs down here. I just skipped over this because as I mentioned, there is a more detailed video on the channel. So we register the different fields that we have. We read the specific error messages if there is any uh, and I'm going to show you the error messages in a second. And then down here, um, also the is submitting to just disable the button or show a different text when submitting these other stuff returned back from our use form state and for our errors. And is, is submitting the pending state, we are getting the form state and destructuring these two values out of it. So let's go back to our base and dashboard. Now, if I refresh this page, I should see the second test that I just sent. If you open this up, you can say you can see this test email that we just sent over. So a nice dashboard that you already have here. And if something ends up in your spam because it was a duplication or for, for whatever reason, uh, the API marked this as a spam, it will end up here. Now, let me also go to my Gmail account to see that I have already received the notification as well as uh, the user that was submitting this contact form. So as you can see here, I've received a form submission from Basin. You can have your own custom domain here if you want. You have to upgrade to a paid plan if you want to. But basically, I've been notified that there has been a contact form submission from this name and email that I can use to either view in the dashboard or respond to the user. 
Now let me just quickly go back to our form submission again. If I try to submit this form without providing the required value, it's going to show me the errors. So that's nice and easy. And the last thing I want to mention is the different pricing plans that are available. So on the free plan, you get one form, one project and 50 submissions per month. It has basic spam protection and ability to send and receive uh, your form submissions through Ajax or JavaScript. Zapier integration, this is where you can integrate this with other third-party apps. So one form submission can trigger a sequence of actions in your application. On the basic, you have three forms, more submissions per month and whatnot. So it's a very easy, simple way of handling form submissions in any application for that matter. Now let's go back to our forms and I want to show you the integration here under the integrations. So you can integrate this with Google Sheets, with Make, which is a similar platform such as the Zapier. You can use them as a glue to then trigger other sequences of actions, or you can just use a webhook. You can add a custom URL here. Basin is going to then send a post request to that custom URL, which is basically an API endpoint inside your own application whenever a submission event is triggered. This is good if you want to customize what happens when a form is submitted or if you wanted to send that data received from Basin to another application, you can use a custom webhook. In other cases, you can use the current integrations or use Zapier and Make to go beyond the current integrations here. And that's a wrap for this video, folks. Basin is an easy way to handle form submissions. It gives you a nice dashboard. It has basic and advanced spam filters. You can also trigger sequences of other actions through custom webhooks or the integrations that I've already shown. So if you have any questions, hit me up in the comments down below and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.